I think Mike Tomlin's a great coach. I'm a fan of his as a human being. I look up to this man. I have profound respect for him. Um, the Steelers were just bad. And I understand that Houston may have been more physical. But that's easy to do when demoralization kicks in and you just don't have it. I get tired of people, Swagoo, trying to ignore that component. And I'm talking about a guy, like he and I have covered sports for decades. But I was in that locker room as a beat writer when you were doing, you know, you're doing radio. I'm in the locker room talking to these guys. And I've seen demoralization kick in. I've seen when guys seemed soft. And it wasn't because they're soft. It's because they had no effort. They weren't interested because they felt hopeless because their team stunk and they were tired of losing or they were tired of the inefficiencies of their teammates, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I saw. I didn't see a Steelers team. And, of course, Mike Tomlin would see more than me, and he knows better than me, so I'm not trying to debate that. But what I saw was a team that said, damn, down after down after down, we ain't getting anywhere. We ain't going to do anything against these boys. You got an offensive coordinator in Matt Canada. Did it ever occur to you, Mike T., that everybody knows that Matt Canada, God bless him, nice guy, what have you, doesn't need to have that job? You've ranked 21st, 23rd, and like 31st in the league since he's been your offensive coordinator. The Steelers, doggy, right now, they're the only team in the NFL without a single game with 400 yards of offense in the last three years. Every other team has had that. They're horrible, okay, offensively. They've got Najee Harris who can ball. They've got Pickens who can ball. They had Johnson before he got hurt. Before. Fryer Muth can ball, okay? Your offensive line is improved. What's the damn problem? The damn problem is that, guess what? Your offensive coordinator is not somebody anybody's feeling. Everybody and their grandmama knows it. And the Steelers' impediment has been loyalty. Of course, it's worked for them for the vast majority of the time since the 1960s. You'd be proud of that. Yes, I but am. But the bottom line is, sometimes it works against you. Yes. Matt Canada doesn't need to be the offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Mike Tomlin can say whatever he wants. But everybody and their mother knows Matt Canada doesn't need to be in that position. I, I completely disagree with you. I mean, Pickett is not the – he may not be the answer at quarterback. Bradshaw is retired, okay? okay? Franco's not there. Passed away, unfortunately. Terrible. That's right. He got Starworth and Swan. They're not there either. That's right. They don't got the – They're not walking offensive. through that door. They're not walking through that door. They don't, they don't have – dog, they have – go to Ben in the, that crew. That's right. They're, How about yeah. that? They, that? That big Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, those boys skip all the way. They went to the Super Bowl. Roethlisberger right. the last couple years of his career yeah. was not nearly right, as good as he was. But he is a two-time Super Bowl champion. Roethlisberger, but right. I mean, Canada, how long has he been in the offensive coordinator? In three court? years. All right, so he had the last year of Roethlisberger, who was shot, oh. and then he had, to, uh, he was bad, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. and then he had two years of picket, and let's face it, he has not played that great. But he was so there because, on the offensive but coordinator? he was there because Big Ben didn't like the previous offensive coordinator, which is why he was inserted. Yeah. Um, Mad Dog, here's what I think. Um, I think Stephen A hit the nail on the head because what we're watching now is Mike Tomlin and Bill Belichick not going to where the NFL is, right? Like, we, we see, it's always hard to talk about coaches like this because they've had so much success, and we hang our hat on that. Bill Belichick runs an archaic offense. You can't, when Nick Saban, I'm, I'm going to take you back. Remember when Nick Saban hired Lane Kiffin mm -hmm. at Alabama, yes. and everybody was like, why would he do this? With Lane Kiffin history and baggage coming in, the, the Tennessee debacle, the USC situation, and everybody was asking, because I was covering football at that time for the SEC Network. Everybody was asking, why would Nick Saban hire Lane Kiffin? Because you got to score 40 to win football games now. We no longer can go out on the field and stop people and think that we're going to score 20 and run the ball 40 times and win football games. You just don't win like that anymore. And I think both of these coaches have not acknowledged that at this point. It doesn't mean they can't coach. They just haven't acknowledged the fact that we have to be explosive. Like, down in and down out as an offense, we have to be explosive. I'm getting into football. We watch Bill Belichick, and yeah, we could blame it on Mac Jones if we want to, but we also can blame it on Belichick for hiring a defensive coach and a right. special teams coach last right. year. Bill O'Brien just came over from Alabama. Right, and where got he to clean up that mess. And got to clean up the mess. And the year prior to that, when you had Josh McDaniels, who does have some modernization of offense, it's why we thought Mac Jones was a good quarterback, right? Now, you, to your point, we bring Kenny Pickett in, 
and we all want to